Welcome to this Fantasy Grounds uh, feature video. We're going to show off the features that are in the test build currently for version Fantasy Grounds 4.5.0. Uh, so this is one that's going to be in the test channel probably for uh, maybe a couple weeks or so, looking to launch it in uh, the very first part of March, depending upon feedback based on the beta. So this is a public beta. You can jump in and play around with this one. You can copy over existing campaigns from live to test. Just please make backup copies of anything and just note that uh, changes that you make in the test campaign uh, version will not necessarily, they will not pass over to your live build unless you do choose to do so through manual processes. So we recommend that this is just for test purposes only and that you're not uh, running it, your active campaign on this one. So the very first thing I want to show off is there's a couple changes on the windows. You'll see there's these, these headers here. A lot of the content has been moved up to the top. Uh, four different windows. So if I look at my items, um, you'll see that it has stuff for items here along the top. It has a, a new section that tells what kind of item it is or what kind of data record it is. Here it's an item record. Uh, NPCs um, will have something similar. Uh, they've got all that sort of stuff along the top. Um, you'll also notice that for NPCs there's now a full body image token and a token camera image and a flat token that's going to be used on the map. That's going to come in uh, later. You also have a share option. You can share the picture, which then shares that asset to the players. They can zoom in and look at the image, and then they can uh, access their shared assets by going to Assets and then looking at the Shared button, and they'll see an access to that as well. So they can clear those out over time if they want, uh, or that can be a, a placeholder for them to go back and refer to you know, any images that they've seen up to this point. Um, so I'm going to jump around a little bit on a couple of different things. We've got a lot of new features that we've added here. Um, I will show you right now. This is the maps. One of the new features is as you hover over tokens, you'll see in the upper left corner, there's a uh, indicator of, of who you're highlighted on, which is really nice for when you're zoomed out. So when you're zoomed way out and you got a bunch of little small things here that you want to see, you can just hover over and it tells you, oh, that's slide tadpole. You can see the any widgets, uh, any effects that are in place, uh, that sort of thing will, will show up there. And this will uh, utilize you know, your settings from the campaign on what you want to show for tokens. Um, the other feature I'm going to show is that on the toolbar, you have the zoom to fit. Uh, you have a ping mode now. So I can just basically go into ping mode and say, look here or here. This is going to use your color, uh, which is going to be found under preferences. So here I've got my color, my active player color, if I wanted it to be uh, green for instance I can change it to be green and now when I in ping mode then it'll show that this this will be green so your players can utilize this as well you can turn this off you can also um, just hold down spacebar and then double click so that's a shortcut to do that and it'll leave the ping out there as well uh, you've got your drawing mode your eraser mode uh, selection mode if you want to multi-select some things you can do that uh, or you can just kind of click to select what you want to select. Uh, you have uh, you target all enemy units when you have an active character. So like um, this character can then just target all active units. That's kind of from before as well. Death markers are, are there. You can clear those out if you want. Uh, whether or not you want to show uh, shortcuts on the map or not. So here you see there's a shortcut. Uh, I can hide that if I want or turn it back on. If you want to lock the tokens, that's the same as before. There's also a player preview vision mode, so as these per people move around, you can see what they can see um, from their vantage point. So I'm going to leave it in player preview mode, and I'm also going to switch over to camera mode, which is a new feature. So in camera mode, you'll see here I'm using the, uh, I can hold space bar and then just move the mouse to do a mouse look. I can use W, A, S, D, I can do that to move around. Uh, Q and E will rotate the camera and then X and C will raise or lower uh, the camera as well. Those also work if I'm in 2D mode. I can use the, the WASD keys as they're referred to, WASD. Uh, those are very common within a lot of uh, game systems as well. And then X and C acts as a zoom level, raising the camera up or down from the, the floor. So I'm going to go back into camera mode here and drop down. Here we go. Get a good viewpoint here. And so this is um, now like what the characters see in their viewpoint. So I can move them around, I can just kind of click and drag them here, follow the person around. We are working on a first person view as well that we're going to do, but this is kind of our first view that we're going to play around with as we kind of work to solidify some things. So as you move around, you can just kind of follow the person with the WASD keys 
and I've got one hand on the WASD and I've got the other hand on uh, the mouse to do mouse looks. I can again hold spacebar and kind of look around see what the player can then see and as I move in here now I've got uh, you know everything here so again they can hover over and they can see who they're going to target all that sort of stuff they can still do control click to target things and then they can do their attacks from there and it'll you know work just like before um, you can do uh, the pointers and so forth too or you can switch back and, and like if you wanted to do like a spell effect for instance I would probably switch back temporarily and I would just say okay I want to do a pointer and I'm going to do I don't know uh, I've got some kind of a cone attack uh, target all of those people you know that sort of stuff so sometimes it's still nice to be able to, to kind of come through and switch back and forth from one mode to the next we assume that uh, this is going to be controllable by each player individually so they could switch back and forth and you'll see here now they're targeting all of those things they can do their attacks just like normal essentially uh, let's clear all the targets and let's get rid of my pointer there you go um, so that's it there. If you wanted to drag and drop uh, new creatures, you'll also notice that um, we've gone through and we've updated a large number of the Wizards of the Coast modules. We plan on going back and doing that with other ones as well. And we've been preparing for this for a while. So we have a number of the newer modules have, whenever you go to NPC, uh, it will have the token and it will have uh, this full body image. I use this specifically because in this case, the slide tadpoles, um, don't currently have this is from uh, Van Delver and Below. They don't currently have an image. So what will happen in that case is it'll just show whatever the token is. The flat token will be shown up there as well. So I'm going to show a couple examples of what that looks like. So from the SRD, if I was to grab say a camel, camel doesn't have it. Well, camel's a C. So if I drag that to the map, then you'll see that the camel shows up here, and I can turn on the visibility, uh, make it visible. Oops, sorry, I did the wrong button. <laughs> I did. Hold on one sec. Okay, so I have uh, corrected my silly mistake here and uh, re-put the people back on the uh, on the map. So you can see here you've got the camel. So what you want to do is you want to go to visibility. You can turn it on or off, uh, visible or always visible or, or whatever, and that's how you can move that. So this is a, a basic token where there's not anything really exciting here, especially a letter token is even worse. Um, I'm going to show you, uh, let's, let's grab the bullet. This is a new image. This is in the SRD. The 5e SRD bestiary has been updated along with D&D 3.5 and Pathfinder 1st Edition. Pathfinder 2nd Edition will also be getting uh, an update to this SRD. But all you do is you just drag the token, drop it in here, uh, and then, like I said before, you want to go to visibility and you can set it to always visible or mass sensitive. Mass sensitive is, is our recommendation because that way uh, this character can see it, but everyone else in the other parts of the map do not, unless there's party vision enabled. So here you can move around, uh, do whatever uh, you want to do. So the other thing you can do is that just like with tokens on a 2D map, I can make things bigger or smaller. So let's say that this is a very tiny bullet. I could then hold down control and then mouse wheel. And now my little baby bullet is now uh, there for me. Or if it's grandpapa bullet, then grandpapa bullet will move here. And now I've got something new and exciting. I can throw at the players. So that's a very quick and dirty uh, version of the uh, new camera mode. Again, you can turn it on or off. should be easy for you to, to navigate and choose whichever method you like. Um, whether or not you want to show the player preview or not, that will also render uh, in the system so I can kind of see everything as a GM or not. And you've got your pings. So that's it for the maps. Um, all the other features are basically the same. You've got a revert option here. So if I decide I don't like what I've done to this map, I can revert that. Uh, let me show you some other things that we've done recently. So we have, um, so one of the things in the past has been when you look at books and you go to your module section, like Fandelver and below, I could pull this up and I've got links to all of the different sections here, one of which is the reference manual. And it's been kind of a little bit, unless you have, you know, learned the basics of fantasy grounds, this is something that a lot of people miss out on if they don't realize that this is here, that you can basically run the entire adventure from, you know, this kind of a, uh, of a screen. Um, but instead, now you can go to story. And if I was to go to, say, Fandelver and below, you'll see these all now show up directly in here, just like story entries did. They're actually, 
if I look at it, they are the record entries from the reference manual, as if you pop that page out, but they are um, showing up in a story entry. So here you can kind of look through here and see uh, what you want to do. You know, run the adventure from here as if it was like a, a regular story entry. The other thing that you can do is that you'll notice there's a books button. So I can click on books, and here it has a list of, okay, if I want to just look at Van Delver and Below, it loads it up. I've got the entire book that I can run here. And if I've got a map, I can then open up the map. I can run the map from there. If I want to look at, say, the Monster Manual, I can go up to the Monster Manual, load it up, and I've got the individual pages of the Monster Manuals. I've got my Player's Handbook. Anything that I have loaded, essentially, anything that was in the modules will show up, but it doesn't show all of the entries. So again, this is only showing the, any modules that has a reference manual. So if I compare this list with this list here, um, there may be some cases where one of these will not show up because it does not have, you know, if it didn't have a reference manual, it wouldn't show up. In this case, they all do have a reference manual, but it does not show, like here, there's also NPCs by letter, for instance, uh, or, or by CR, so I could then you know, look and see everybody that has, uh, you know, CR21 or whatever. So that's a slightly different view of things by letter, the same thing. Um, I've got a link to the direct images there, which is the same thing as going to images and then selecting the monster manual or whatever I want to show um, from there. So that's, uh, again, a couple of new ways to access functionality and features that you already had before. Uh, let's see. Some of the other features you can do. Is, so here, uh, these are your books. Um, I'll go back. Let's see the campaign is how you now build. If I want to build my own content, it'll show up in here. If I um, want to create a brand new story entry, so I come here. Let's just grab a new group. Let's say... Let's do the uncategorized group here. So if I wanted to add a new entry, I'd just do add item. And this is a basic story entry. And you have, um, you know, it supports basic text markup. So here I've got, you know, uh, control one, control two, which is the heading. Control three is the chat box, uh, bullet list, um, link list and so forth. So you can kind of like step through there or you can obviously do the right click and choose a paragraph type, make it a chat frame or make it a, um, a heading, you know, all that sort of stuff like you could do before. It's just a standard story entry essentially. The other option is I have this button here, add an advanced item. So this is an advanced story entry. So this is just like creating a reference manual entry. So I can create a text block. This is a basic Text block. And this has all the same things from the other one, so I can do control one, two, three, four. I can change the paragraph type. I can add, but the only difference is now I can add a frame. So if I want to like call that out differently, I can do that. I can have multiple things with different frames. Uh, this is another simple text. And I could add frames to this one as well. I could do the two column one. This is my column one. This is column two. Uh, all of these can still be styled differently, you know, based off of, you know, just like before. And I could still add frames. I want this just to be you know, that kind of a frame, whatever. So you get a little bit more creativity. Um, you have text and image combinations. You can delete sections if you want. I can move things up or down within the thing. I can copy and duplicate the entire record and then make an edit. So if I want to split this into two pages, I could just dupe it. And then here, uh, you'll see I've got a copy and now that I can do. Uh, sorry, it's a main story. Let's see. Oh, that copies it. And then I can basically create a new one and now I can paste it in. And then I can just say, okay, well, this one is going to have everything up to that point and I'll go and edit the other one. So this is copy, record, whatever. Uh, let's see some other stuff you can do so again let's go back to advanced story entry you can add images which is one of the big draws is that I can have an image and I can go to my assets and I can say okay I want the image of let's say an adult gold dragon and just drag and drop it in there this was pulled from the asset so now it makes it not clickable so if you want that to be a clickable asset 
And what you would do is you'd open this up, you make an image record. So at first you make it an image record and you can organize it however you want and then you drag it in. And now this record is now clickable. So when it's when it's in a locked form, this is how that you know, screen will look and I can click on it and it opens up the record for me uh, to then look at. So uh, one thing is if you're going to do a lot of those records, you might want to turn off lighting uh, and all that sort of stuff. If it's just an image of a monster, for instance. Uh, but there you go. That gives you a lot of options uh, to play with things. Uh, if I unlock it, let's see the other options I have. It's really just those those options down here. You got a text block, dual text block, header. Oh, header block is new. So not new, but this is a new thing you can use uh, that you can't use in a basic story. Um, my introduction. So then you know it's just a different styling, just a different way to kind of lay things out make it look good uh, again once you're done editing turn it off uh, you don't see the controls it just looks a little bit cleaner after the fact and now this is your link so you can link drag that link around just like you could a normal story link you could link it to a map uh, and then it makes it clickable and, and use it basically the same way that you can as a story entry you can link it from one thing to another thing um, everything you can do in a story entry you can do that here you can shrink it down as far as this so if you like really small, tight kind of story entries, you can do that. And then I can scroll around and do whatever they need. Uh, there are a few things, like you'll notice that the dual text box, uh, column one, column two, if I shrink it down small enough, it should, uh, okay, I guess we still have to work on that one. We, we were gonna make it like shift down at a certain point. So we'll probably add that at, at a certain point as well. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. So I think that's mostly it. Um, there's a couple other fixes that we've done in here as well. Um, there's scrollable uh, new buttons on the image toolbar. Let's go back to an image here. Let's see this map. So these little buttons down here, you can use these to pan things around a little bit easier than the other control we had before. You can zoom out and in. Um, so it should make it easier to run on maybe like touchpads and stuff like that too, um, instead of using, or if you don't have mouse wheels, I used to use, I use a mouse wheel a lot to do this, basically zoom in and out. Um, so that should help for folks that don't run with a three button mouse, uh, which we do highly recommend still. Uh, let's see. I think that's basically it. Um, so hopefully, you know, go out, test it. Let us know if you find anything weird with it. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. Oh, I guess I can go one more thing since you stayed on the video. So this is a new dice pack that we're looking at. So this is uh, got some cool little skulls and so forth. Uh, if I look at the dice pack, I'll show that real, brief, real briefly. So basically, stars and clovers. And then we also have hearts. So there's a heart burst, there's a cascade of hearts, uh, love explosion, stars, and stars with burst, star cascade, which is going to have lots of stuff going on with it, um, star nova. And green astral, which is just a different style. So you'll see here you've got um, lots of stuff toxic, death abounds. So there you go. Thanks for watching.